for one who is you, who is seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility for him there is no failure for one who is looking at the simple events of this life itself as the goal of life for him there is failure and success if you are just seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility if you have a good deal you use that for your well-being if you have a bad deal you use that for your well-being the economy was on the boom when every fool could be successful no. <laughs> it didn't take much when the economy is on the boom everybody gets carried isn't it now there has been a meltdown now it takes something else to be successful <laughs> So, when the economy was on the boom, you could have brought a certain dispassion towards the money that's flowing in. Now the economy is down, the taps are all closed up. It's time to come, meditate, walk in the mountains. <laughs> There's a lot of time. There's a lot of time on your hands, isn't it? When there was money, it took away your time and life. Now the taps are closed, lots of time, this is the time. So it doesn't matter what the hell happens. It doesn't matter what the hell happens with your life. If you are seeing this life only as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, then whatever the situation, it is beautiful and very useful, very, very useful. Once there was a farmer like you, who was tired of various natural factors ruling his… the quality of his uh, crop. So one day he called Shiva. It was a wild card entry. So he found excess and Shiva said, what? He said, I'm tired of all the natural nonsense happening. Obviously you are not a farmer. I know from history that you were a hunter. You were not a farmer. <laughs> you don't know what it means to farm. Why don't you leave the nature in my hands? I am a farmer. I know when it should rain. I know when there should be sunlight. I know when there should be wind. I know what… everything. You don't know because you are just a hunter. And you are a crazy ascetic. You definitely not a good farmer. The wrong times it's raining, at wrong times things are happening. You leave it to me. Shiva was one of those moods, he said, okay, nature is in your hands. Then the farmer planned his crop, planted down a maize crop, rain, <laughs> poke the land and see, okay it's soaked up to six inches, stop. <laughs> then plough it, plant it, wait for two days, rain, mm, sunlight. Today I am working in the field, cloud. <laughs> so everything just happened the way he wanted. A beautiful maize crop came. He was overjoyed, see? 
is good. Nature should be in farmer's hands. And then when the time to harvest came, he wanted to see because none of the birds were coming, he was surprised because that also he said, no birds, no birds. Then he went and opened and saw nice big everything, but you opened and saw no grain inside. Then he thought, what the hell is this? What did I do wrong? Then he couldn't figure out because rain, water, sunshine, everything he managed properly. Then again he went back to Shiva. But he was in this condition. He waited for many years for him to open his eyes. By the time his… you know these many years, the fields and the family, everything went to… But he wanted to know the answer. What went wrong? His farmer first. Then when Shiva opened his eyes, he asked, I did everything right but there is no grain. Did you sabotage my crop? Shiva said, I've been watching. You were doing… you were in charge so I didn't want to interfere. The rain was great, the sunshine was great, everything was fine. But you stopped all the winds. I used to always send fierce winds which would threaten your crop. But because the plants felt pushed and threatened, they put their roots deeper into the earth. So grain happened. Now you have great maize crop. No maize? So various situations in your life, either you can use it to make yourself stronger and better or you can sit and cry. This is the choice you have. Everything, it doesn't matter what happens. The most horrific event happened in your life, that also can be used for your growth and your well-being. If only if you have clearly seen the small events of your life. When I say small events, I mean your business, your marriage, your children, all those big things. All these things are just a stepping stone. This is not new to you because in this culture, they put this into you for centuries, for millenniums. They told you, your life is about mukti. Your marriage, your business, your social life, these are all just means to get there. Either you go with it or you go without it. But whether you are a sannyasi or you are in the samsara, your only goal is mukti, yes? The goal was not just for the sannyasi, for everybody it is mukti. If you can walk alone, you walk alone. You want party going with you, you walk with the party, that's your choice. You want to get there quick, you walk alone. You want to go there having picnic on the way slowly, you go with people. Choice is yours. But the important thing is whatever the hell you're doing, there's only one goal. So if you have set this up, then all the events of life, everything is beneficial. The boom is beneficial, the meltdown is even more beneficial actually. It is also ecologically very good, you know, the meltdown. No? <laughs> so, the fear of failure. Failure is bad enough. Fear is adding spice to it, isn't it? Success happens to you not because you desire it, because you earn it. Everybody desires it. It comes only if you're capable of it. 
When will you learn how to handle my thought, how to handle my emotion? We will give you tools how to figure this machine out. Whatever the issue, we'll do our best, but this should not be the issue. See, uh, this is an unfortunate condition that a whole lot of human beings are in. In their experience, in their personal experience, life is like me versus the universe. Being in competition with the universe is a stupid thing to do. That's not a competition you must get into. Hello? Me versus the universe is a bad competition to get into. Would you, you also agree with? So, this is why yoga… Yoga does not mean twisting and turning your body. The word yoga means union. Right now it's me versus the universe. This is just your psychological condition. This is not the reality. Even when you feel utterly lonely, are you still breathing? So you're transacting with the world, isn't it? Yes? You only can't get along with the people around you, but atmosphere is okay with you, food is okay if it tastes good, water is okay, you have transaction with the world, isn't it? Your existence is constantly an engagement with the universe, but your mind becomes against the universe. If you create a psychological condition that you're against or you're in competition with the universe or the cosmos, obviously you will feel crushed for small things. Little things will crush you. When I say little things, maybe you failed your examination, maybe you got thrown out of this university, maybe you got fired from a job, Maybe somebody ditched you, maybe something else like this happened. These are all small things between life and death. Because you came here with nothing, isn't it? When you die, there is no container service for you. You die with nothing. In spite of that, most people have turned their homes into warehouses. Most people are carrying such a huge baggage on their head, as if they are carrying the whole universe on their head. This is their own psychological condition. Your thought and emotion is what you're talking about, right? When are you going to figure out how to handle your thought and emotion? Not hers, not hers, not his, yours. When are you going to learn how to handle my thought and my emotion? at the end of your life. The only problem really with life is just this. Most human beings have taken themselves too seriously. They don't understand… You've seen on the computer screen these pop-ups? Yes. You are a pop-up on this planet <laughs> You pop up for two seconds and pop out. No, no, you must see, Countless number of people like you and me have walked this planet. Oh, they were also big people. Where are they? All? Topsoil? Topsoil or no? Unless they… somebody, your friends decide to bury you real deep, <laughs> fearing that you may raise from the dead. You know, there have been such instances. Or maybe you're planning to go to heaven. Hello? Anybody who talks about a place other than this place, as a better place than this, this is a crime against humanity. My fundamental work is to destroy all heavens so that people will learn to live well here. All these idiots who made a hell out of themselves, they want to go to heaven. They made a mess out of this place and then they want to go to heaven. I'm asking you, do you have any proof? Do you have any proof that you are not already in heaven and messing it up? Do you have any proof? You're already in heaven making a mess out of it, yes? Simply because you are not even learning how to handle your basic faculties of thought and emotion, isn't it? Your only justification is, everybody is like this only. That's how it is in a madhouse. That is how it is in a madhouse, only a doctor looks crazy 
<laughs> so when are you going to handle it? Slowly, at the age of sixty? I'm asking, when will you learn how to handle my thought, how to handle my emotion, how to handle my body, how to handle my chemistry? When are you going to figure this? At the end of your life? Because this culture has grown, when to do spirituality means when you're seventy, when you're no good for anything else. No, at the earliest possible time, whatever is most profound about you, not about heavens, about this life, everything that you need to know, you must know soonest, isn't it? Only then you will live a sensible life. Now, the city is not in that kind of condition, where if you open your window, breeze will not come, smoke will come smell will come, dust will come. So, it's good, convenient. But you don't have to sit here twenty-four hours, only for work. You can take a walk whenever you can. And anyway, seventy-two percent is water, twelve percent is earth, only six percent is air. In that six percent air, Air is not always in the breath. Out of the six percent air that is here, it is only less than one percent which you are breathing. Rest is simply there. For some people it's concentrated in the brain. <laughs> but otherwise in every cell in the body there is air. So when you say air, it's not just the breath. Six percent air is in every cell in the body. Just remove it a little bit from the brain, it'll be good. It's good if it's in the lungs, in the heart and the muscles, they function better if there is oxygen, you know? You know this, if you're oxygen deprived, muscles become rigid because this needs air, otherwise it'll not work. So, water is seventy-two percent. So maximum care should be taken about the water because it's seventy-two percent. If you are going to an examination, suppose uh, it is like this, let's say you're going for physics examination. You have water, earth, this, that, but just the water subject is for seventy-two marks. Naturally you spend more time reading about water, isn't it? Studying water, yes or no? Air is only six percent, you may not study because you are okay with ninety-four. Water you must study because it's seventy-two percent. You must take enormous care about the water because it's seventy-two percent and it has tremendous memory. If I open this water or even without opening, if I say something to this water, it remembers. There has been lot of experiments in this direction. So, uh, if you take this water from wherever the water works is and pump it to your house, let's say it went through fifty bends, forced, pumped forcefully with a certain force, which naturally is done and you are living on twelfth floor of the apartment, so further forced up. Now they are saying, if it goes through fifty bends, about sixty percent of the water has turned poisonous. Immediately when it comes in the tap, if you take it and immediately drink it, it will work as poison in your system. If you take it and hold it for some time, it will undo itself again. Because the poisoning is not chemical, it is molecular. Molecular changes are happening, no chemical change is happening. This is why traditionally your grandmother always told you, always you must gather the water, keep it overnight in your house, in a properly cleaned vessel with vibhuti and kunkum on it and one flower on it. Yes or no? In traditional homes, only tomorrow morning you drink it. Not as soon as it comes inside your house, you don't drink it because it carries all kinds of memories. 
In very traditional homes, people every day do puja to the water pot. Yes? And you never drink the water as soon as it comes, you keep it, give it enough time to undo itself from whatever nonsense it has gathered so that it is suitable for you when you drink it. Water you must take care because it's seventy-two percent. It's more, it's first class, you know, more than passing mark. Next thing is food because that's the earth, twelve percent, still substantial, isn't it? So how food goes into you, from whose hands it comes to you, how you eat it, how you approach it, all these things are important. Then comes your air, six percent. In that six percent, only one percent or less is your breath. Rest is happening in so many other ways. And it's important, especially if you have children, at least once a month, take them out somewhere, not to the damn cinema, again breathing everybody's nonsense. <laughs> the air gets affected just by the sounds and the intentions and the emotions, all the rubbish that's happening on the screen and all the rubbish that's reflecting in human minds of violence, of sex, of greed, of this and that, is affecting that limited air in that hall in a tremendous way. So instead of taking them to the cinema, take them to the river, teach them how to swim, climb a mountain, where is mountain Sadhguru? Himalayas is so far away. <laughs> Even a small hill is a mountain for your boy. Yes? Even a little rock, just go climb and sit on one of them, Children will enjoy it immensely, they will become fit, you will become fit. And above all, your body and mind will function differently. And above all, you are in touch with the Creator's creation, which is the most important thing. Not your own rubbish that you made, yes it's comfortable right now, but it's not everything. So instead of going to the restaurant, instead of going to the cinema, instead of going somewhere else like that, at least once a month, it doesn't cost anything. Huh? Doesn't cost anything. You can take your rice and aukai and go and eat there. <laughs> anyway you have it, you don't have to spend money on this. Even better, if you don't want to spend money even on the bus or car, all of you cycle just three kilometers, five kilometers outside, Hyderabad, sit on one rock, just spend time there, feel the sun, it's very important you get some sun, air, good water, come back, you are doing Bhuta Shuddhi in a very natural way. It is not the ultimate type of Bhuta Shuddhi, but you are doing some Bhuta Shuddhi. This is what I was saying just now, if you take care of food, water, air is not always in your hands because you're living in a city, but water and food you can take care. And what kind of fire burns within you, that also you can take care. Sunlight has not become impure, isn't it? Get some sunlight every day, please. Get some sun on your body every day because sunlight is still pure, isn't it? Nobody can fortunately contaminate it. And what kind of fire burns within you? Is it the fire of greed? fire of hatred, fire of resentment, fire of anger, fire of love, fire of compassion. What kind of fire burns within you? You take care of that, then you don't worry about your physical and mental well-being, it's taken care of. <laughs>